Greenwich House was formed in 1902, and our mission hasn't changed since then. We still want to provide services to the entire community. Well, it's in Greenwich Village, so as you might think, the membership, uh, a lot of visual artists, a lot of performing artists, a lot of writers, uh, people in theater, music, and so forth. Uh, it's the most unique senior center that I know of in the city, and I ran 34 senior centers. A great percentage of our new members are young, and by young I mean 60, 61, and they're not local people. Local senior center is, uh, you know, bingo and lousy catered food. We do not fit that bill. They all come for different things, for our classes, for our trips. We have a belly dance class, we have a, a brainer size class. To a very large number of our members live alone and uh, they come here for a socially welcoming environment. Eli was the founder of the theater desk. When he started it, it was called the Theater Club, and basically because there was so much interest in theater here. We now have the largest theater desk, uh, at least at a senior center, and it's really based on him. to Greenwich House for about 15 years. 24 years. Four years. About three, four years. To firework in these amazing gas kilns here in the middle of New York City is astonishing. It's such a, a rare thing to be able to do it. The pottery is a vibrant place that really helps change people's lives. It's an incubator for artists. There's a great internship program and residency program, which is all highlighted by the exhibitions that run throughout the year. I was here when Dave started. Uh, in fact, he was a student, I believe. And then come to know him as a teacher and as a person, as being one of the most caring and sensitive and um, humble people in this group. I have never seen Dave that he hasn't immediately tried to help me. No matter how difficult the situation is, he always has an answer and he's always willing to, to think of a better way of doing it. Dave, as a teacher, both your work and you are brimming with excellence. It was clear to me when I first started the fierce love that the families and the faculty feel about this school. Um, it is oftentimes called um, a gem. You know, for the West Village in particular, um, we're the place that people come to that's like their second home and, and also they're, they're learning this invaluable skill and the next generation has their children. This is the first place they think of and I think that that's, um, that's quite a reach. I'm very pleased to say that we've given away scholarships to various instruments and various students. Some of these families are uh, not able to pay, you know, almost a thousand dollars in tuition per term. And, um, you know, you see their, their applications and how much they love Greenwich House Music School and how much they love learning. We're providing a, a valuable service to that family because not only are we um, potentially training a musician, we're also training that student and that family to be lover, you know, a lover of arts. Greenwich House Music School was always my musical home, where I first was able to find this thing that was, I guess, already in myself. Walking in the door always brings back uh, all those years where I, where I was a student. The faculty have been teaching for a very long time, including our piano chair, Herman Diaz, who's been here over 60 years. He is a rock in this institution. My first teacher was um, was actually Bennett Lerner. Um, he was a he was a student of Hermann's, and I was his student for about ten years. And then uh, when he moved to Thailand, I switched to Hermann. Hermann taught me so much about the inner structure of of music. I was six years old. We met with then Maxwell Powers. I played a little bit for him, and he said. I think I know just the person to teach you, and so he introduced me to Herman Diaz. And I can remember that first lesson and how he talked about using your whole body at the piano, using the dead weight from your shoulders and your arms to make a massive sound, and totally relaxed, and he just brought the music alive to me. Most of all, um, it was technique. The fingers need to support the weight of the arm, but the arm needs to be completely dead. I've found that that lesson applies to almost everything in life, that 
You need to know where to be strong and where to relax, and that leads you to harmony with whatever environment you're in. If you come to our summer camp or after school, you'll find that the art focus of that camp gives children an opportunity to express themselves that most other camps could not offer them. The after school is a totally different program from any other program that's offered here in the village. We have different classes like architecture, uh, sewing, photography, uh, jewelry making. The kids and the teachers that we've had for the past years, they've been here for almost 10 years and some even, they were kids here. So I think the parents like that it's the same faces. I like to come to Grand House because my after school at my school isn't that fun because all we play is board games. We, we get a lot of kids from different areas. We have kids coming from Brooklyn. We have kids coming from all over the city. I think that's what makes it special. A day in the life of summer camp is very, very hectic. The kids, they have two art classes in the morning and two art classes in the afternoon. I take architecture, sewing, we make jewelry. I take painting and drawing. Um, so it's a very long day, hectic but a lot of fun and and it's I'm very proud to to be able to see all these kids grow. No matter how different you are, you, you just fit in. I believe everybody wants their kids to be doing something after school. And the kids that receive scholarships, they come more days out of the week. So if we're able to grant more scholarship money, more classes will be affordable for more families. And I, I believe to be able to provide a scholarship to some families that really need it, like some kids that come from broken homes or some kids that, you know, they have just one parent that's working or a single mom or a single dad. Being able to provide a little bit of help and just to, to be able to give that one kid, that chance of having a class that he might not be able to ever take in his entire life. I think it's a big, big necessity.